So I'm here with Todd Fisher. It's so nice to meet you, Todd. No, thank you. Um, first of all, what was it like growing up in such an artistic family? Artistic family, indeed. I mean, but it was my normal uh, to see my mother first, you know, make these films. And, and I would watch her in a live show and you'd be mesmerized by her skills. It, her dancing and singing and the audience just, just lapped her up. They were like just mesmerized by her. And so was I, you know, but it was a little different when you'd separate, you know, you'd go walk off stage and she'd say, did, did you do your homework? You know, and so there's the mom, right? And the mom was a tr an amazing mom because the mom took us places. A lot of parents that were parents of famous kids left them behind with the nannies. Mm -hmm. Not my mom. She took us to the sets. She let us play in the back lot. She always encouraged our creativity. And I think, you know, that's a perfect little mix of things. And without that, would you have Carrie? You know, would you have that sort of unbridled creativity that Carrie exuded. And I totally agree with that. And I think hands-on experience too with everything you do is so, you learn so much more and being on set for you obviously. Yeah, it's, it's hard to learn some of the things that we learned, you know, out of a book or out of a classroom. Some of that is definitely hands-on. Life is, is gonna deal it out. And we watched my mother go through some really uh, difficult things, some amazing things. We had this raucous life and this amazing privileged life, good times and bad times, both. But my mother, you know, gracefully survived it all and showed us the way that you walk through life, you know, and that was a true inspiration. And it also is what gave Carrie the strength to get through her issues in life, you know, as she was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder, what allowed her to come out about that and to survive it in such great style was partly that, that example my mother led. So did they show much emotion when you would see them going through stuff or were they very good at hiding it in front of uh, you? Oh, they fought just like mothers and daughters do in the teenage years and later in life they didn't talk to each other at all for a while. And then hopefully the ending that all mothers and daughters have is that they came back together and appreciated each other in great depths. But there was a competition in the early days. It was difficult for Carrie to think that there was a competition to be in the shadow of Debbie Reynolds. I didn't feel that that was true. I loved the shadow. My mother was awesome. I mean, who wouldn't want to be protected by this amazing lady, so talented, so caring, so loving. Uh, you know, I thought she gave great shade. Definitely, I agree. And was writing a book part of your therapy to help heal with your loss? I can't imagine. Yeah, it was, it was cathartic to be able to write the book. It was also sort of a sense of urgency because I was the last person with the stories. Carrie had been writing all the stories, and I was satisfied because it's unbelievable. She was brilliant at writing the stories. I was just kind of kicking back and letting her write all the stories. And then Carrie leaves, you know, and there's a lot of stories that still need to be told, a lot of stories that weren't clear or straightened out. So I kind of go back and clean it all up and add a few more to, to boot. But, you know, I, I, uh, I was the caretaker of, of the archives of all the stories. And Carrie used to come to me anyway for a lot of these stories. So I, I did have to get it done. I felt a sense of urgency. If something ever would have happened to me, many of those stories would have been just gone. So it's important to, to do it. It was both cathartic and a bit of legacy. And how long did it take for you to get it all together and then finally say, I'm done, it's finished, it's ready to go? It took eight months to do it, which was relatively quick. Uh, I had a great ghostwriter, Lindsay Harrison, who's brilliant at this, which helped. That skipped it along because of the, the process of organizing and knowing how to string this together it required some experience that I do not have. I, I may know how to tell a lot of stories, but they could, that could just be 800 pages instead of 400 pages. So she was excellent at keeping that on track. So that was important, but, but just the, the process of the time where you're, you write certain things down, I would record certain stories. I would find myself telling stories and then going, gosh, I gotta put that in. I, oh, and then I'd get nine chapters in and realize I had left something out, you know, and I would have to go back or I would have to figure out how to weave that into a flashback. So there, it was a new process for me. I've, I've written screenplays in other forms, but I'd never written a book. And uh, it was a fun thing to do. I love telling our stories. Uh, normally I wouldn't have touched it with a 10 foot pole, but without Carrie here, you know, that's it. I'm on. So was there a lot of comedy in your house, a lot of dressing up and pranks? Oh, 
Yeah, I mean, as children, especially when we were a little more carefree, uh, you know, we used to dress up in my mother's costumes that she had saved from the Halloween, from MGM and 20th Century Fox. It not, she would have been, it was her worst nightmare if she had known uh, that we were wearing some of these outrageous Marilyn Monroe costumes, mm -hmm. Carrie's got, you know, you whatever, you know, we're fooling around in these clothes. Uh, but it was fun play, you know, it was great make-believe. Growing up on the back lots and being able to run around those sets and then going home and being able to make our own little home movies and uh, sort of having this mother that was just feeding your creativity. It was like, if you said, I have this idea, I don't care what it was, <laughs> she would just allow you to run wild with your creativity. And I think that's kind of why we are creative people. You said, was things funny? I mean, <laughs> my mother is really funny, you know, until you don't do your homework or eat your spinach, you know, so she can be just like any other mom at that point. She used to joke, you know, that uh, she was a terrible cook. And it's very true. She was a terrible cook. But she, I used to say, but you can afford the chef that makes the great cookies. So I still get the great cookies. It just wasn't baked by mom, but it was paid for by mom. Did she uh, get better near the end? No. Or no. My mother never could cook. Carrie was a good cook. I don't know why. She just loved it. She made like banana fritters and souffles and fancy stuff. And it was, it was, I never would have expected it, but she was brilliant at it. How did she learn all that? Did she go through some cookbooks or self-taught? Books, self-taught. Uh, you know, some, someone would teach her like a little recipe and then she'd improve on it. She'd read her books. You know, Carrie was a ferocious reader. When she was a little girl, I would walk by her room and she'd be reading. And then I'd come by four hours later, she'd be reading. And then I'd come by four hours later and she'd be reading. Uh, she just poured through books. And so the cookbooks were no different. She had an incredible appetite for literature. That's amazing. And I know you probably get asked this a lot and you've seen them a thousand times, but what, what is one of your favorite roles for each, your mother and your sister? Well, your personal favorite. Okay, that's a good way to put it. So my personal favorite on my mom's side is the catered affair. She plays Betty Davis's daughter that's getting married and it's, it's a really cool movie. It's Gore Vidal wrote it. It's a brilliant little movie and most people haven't seen it, but it's a dramatic role by my mom and it's excellent. And there's no singing or tap dancing. She just hits you with the acting it's really good and she's with Betty Davis who becomes her longtime friend that's cool uh, Carrie uh, you know I think the the last Jedi turns out to be my favorite thing now before that I could have said when Harry met Sally or something like that but the last Jedi I mean you know she and Princess Leia at that point are one and she nails that role I mean she's just blows me away when I when I saw that part not just the fact that she had become the general, that she's the seasoned person, the quality of her acting at that point is is deep, very deep. My brother had the Star Wars figurines growing up in yes. Australia. He absolutely loved it. So. Well, a lot of kids played with those figures. I never got the, uh, no one ever gave me any of those toys. Mm -hmm. I'm a little old at the, that point, but I did get to play with the actual Princess Leia, and I guess that's good. That's that's what counts, right? Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, it was so nice to talk to you, Thank Todd. You. And um, obviously, where can we check this amazing book out right here? Well, it's available on, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble sites. Uh, it will be out in the U.K. next week and other places worldwide. But uh, you can go to toddfisher.com, another place to kind of figure out where it might be available. There's an audio edition that was really difficult to do. Uh, the first few chapters were a breeze, and then at the end, it's a little tough, obviously. But uh, you it's had audio block. <laughs> I, I had heartbreak, oh, you know, because yeah. the last two chapters are really yeah. difficult time in my life, and I had written it so honestly that then I had to read it, and uh, I was like, "Wow, who wrote this thing? This is too brutal." Uh, it it is good though; it's just heartbreaking for me. Yeah. But it was uh, it was worth it in the end. But it was probably the hardest thing I've ever done to read those last two chapters. Okay. Uh, but uh, it was easier to write them than it was to read them, I'll tell you that. Well, I'm sure they'd be both so proud of you. So thank, thank you. you so much for your it's been time. A thank, thank you. you. Good to meet you. You too.